Welcome to our Book of Acts Now Global Church and School. As today we're continuing to look at the Hebrew alphabet, the alphabet. We'll be looking at uh, a very special word today. It's the letter Zayan, and uh, all those a number of words in the Bible that use this letter. But look, these are the building blocks of the Word of God. And so the more you know about these Hebrew letters and how they're used, the better you can understand what God had in mind and the Bible writers. And so today we're continuing to dig into the Word of God. And this isn't just the Old Testament. How many know that when Christ was here on earth, he was not speaking English? He was not speaking Spanish. He was not speaking Greek. He would have been speaking Hebrew or Aramaic. And so when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, if you want to know what he meant, you have to go back into the language he was speaking. That gives you a better understanding of what was meant. Yes, we can rely on Bible translators, but, you know, they had multiple words and ideas they could choose from. And so as we go back into the original language and we see what was really being spoken, God, through the Holy Spirit, can speak to us about application and give us revelation. And that's what we're seeking today. So we're looking at this particular letter. Uh, it looks like a T with a crooked, crooked hat. Yeah? So that's the Zayan. And this letter means weapon or to cut off. So we're going to look at some words in the Bible that uses this so we can get an idea as to how we're using this. So the word for enemy, this is pretty straightforward. Now in Hebrew, of course, you read from right to left. They're the only ones that are in their right mind. So let's <clears throat> stay in here. And then what is this letter? Well, this is the resh. And uh, so, Mike, if you could bring also to um, our guest a copy of the Hebrew alphabet, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so we have um, this little letter here is the valve, which is A. So this is the Z sound. The Z and makes the Z sound. It's really T-S, but it's, you know, like pizza. And so, um, so you have this T-S sound, and you have the A, and you have the R. So this is pronounced Zar. That's how you pronounce that. And, it, and what, so what does it mean? Well, you have a, the word picture here is weapon. This is the man or the person. And so literally, a weapon man. So the idea, if you see somebody carrying a weapon, now not all weapons are bad, right? I mean, the word of God can be considered a weapon. But when you see somebody carrying a weapon, you, you judge, you have some discernment, you judge, uh, are they dangerous and do they mean me harm? And so when you see somebody carrying and they, you, they look like they could do you harm, you consider them an enemy. So this is the idea of these letters and what it means. <clears throat> this is really interesting. You notice here on this next word, the same word for prune is to sing. And when I saw that, I thought, well, what, you know, what's the correlation between singing and having a prune? Well, there is a correlation. I'll explain it to you. So here again, we have uh, the Zayan. Uh, with the C sound, the A, M, this square is mem, and it has two potential meanings. One is chaos, or what, massive waters, and so in this case it's chaos, and then we have Raish, the, high, the highest person, or a person. And so let's put those three word pictures together from those three letters. In this instance, it means to cut off. So to cut off chaos of a person what does that have to do with singing? Well, simply this. When you begin to praise God in the midst of your circumstances, people who are bringing chaos into your life will be cut off, and so will the chaos. That's why the Bible tells us to, in the midst of, of uh, difficult circumstances and trials, begin to praise the Lord, because as you praise Him, all the chaos and the surrounding you, suddenly peace comes in. When you praise him, it cuts off the chaos. All right, so let's connect it with the idea of the prune. Well, the, remember these are word pictures, visual images that they had. When you are, are picking a plum, it looks like you could be picking a harp. And so that's why the two letters or are, are words are connected. And, uh, well, if you're picking the plum, you're cutting it off from the tree, too, aren't you? 
But I thought this was interesting. This is pronounced uh, again, the Z sound, the A, the M, the A, and the R, Zamar. That's how you pronounce this. And you think, well, how am I ever going to remember all of this? It's a lot. Well, once you've been through the alphabet a couple of times, you'll be amazed. Your mind will start picking up these uh, letters and what they mean with the word pictures and connecting them. And suddenly you're looking at Bible words and you're getting a deeper meaning of what really is being said. This here, and to enlighten, um, this letter here is the noon. And that is either um, life or action. The word picture actually is a fish swimming through water. Life or action. And so again, we have um, the Zayan weapon. We have the hay, which means to reveal or declare, and the race, the person. So what, it, what does all of this have to do with to be enlightened? Well, let's put that together. Action is the person. And so the idea is you can tell by the action of somebody who has a weapon who, you know, who they are and what they're doing. Are they friend? Are they foe? Or do they mean harm? So really, in this instance, the word uh, to be enlightened might actually also have the idea of having discernment. You look at people who are around you that have weapons, you better have discernment. Now, in Texas, I don't know how it is in other states, but um, if you have a license, we have open carry. So just like in the Old West, when you're in Texas, you could be carrying a six-shooter on your, on your hip. Well, that's great. But if you run into somebody who's carrying a gun, you need to have discernment or be enlightened as to whether or not um, they're, they're a threat to you. So that's the kind of enlightenment we're talking about. So as you look at your handout uh, with the Hebrew letters, uh, you'll see on there, um, there's the word picture, there's the meaning. So that's our reference. And if you're online and you're watching this and you don't have a handout, go to HebrewForChristians.com and all the Hebrew letters are there with their meaning. All right, so let's go to the next word, bad counsel. Anybody ever have some bad counsel given to you? Buy that stock and you find out eh, it's not so good. <laughs> well, what is, you know, it, bad counsel, what is that all about? Well, here again, we have weapon. We have um, the mem here. And then we have the hay to reveal and declare. So the weapon um, <clears throat> of chaos is revealed. Or somebody in chaos to you is revealed. And so bad counsel brings chaos is what, the, is what the Hebrew word is saying to you. And that's true. If you get wrong counsel, it's going to wind up giving bad fruit. So that's why the Bible says seek counsel to two or more witnesses to let every word be established. So if you're thinking about making a decision of some kind that's going to affect your life, um, biblically speaking, it's good to go to a brother and sister in Christ, ask for prayer, ask for counsel, and see if God will give you confirmation. Recently, we were praying about something that my wife and I, we went to two people, and we asked for a prayer, and we got the same answer. And the same answer was this, wait and let the water settle. Don't rush into... Uh, doing anything, wait on God. I like that four-letter word, W-A-I-T, wait. Sometimes that's what God will say to us, and we may have a brother or sister who's saying, hey, we don't want you to have bad counsel. We, want, we feel like God is saying, wait on this, and it will clear up, and you'll begin to understand what you need to do. That was a really good word of counsel to us. And so that is pronounced uh, Zima. You have the M here. So you can see, after looking at different biblical concepts, if you go back into the original language, you get a deeper sense of what the Bible writers had in mind. Amen? <clears throat> the, I want to talk for a minute about the Hebrew year today because it involves the Zan. Now, these letters, we're in the, we've, as of September, we started the Hebrew year 5780. And each of these numbers... Uh, it's like in the Roman alphabet. Each of these are connected to a letter in the alphabet. And, uh, and so we have the hay. This is connected to the hay. This is connected to the, the uh, Zion. Um, 
this is 80 is connected actually to uh, pay, which means to speak. And 8 by itself uh, points us to new beginnings. So what is this year all about? Now, if we backed up 10 years, we would be 5770. And for that 10 years, for that decade of all the, the years that were 71, 72, 73, those were all about ion, which means to see what God is doing. Now for the next decade, the next 10 years, we've shifted focus and it's going to be to speak with the mouth and declare restoration. And so this is important for us to get. All of the things that God has been speaking to you about your future, about your destiny, promises you've been standing on and believing God for, this now is the decade to see them come in and be fulfilled and to declare with your mouth the things that God has been speaking. That's what this year is right now and will be for the next 10 years. So God wants us to do that. He wants us to claim his promises and believe him, but to speak them out. And so now it's time. It's amazing that this coming year is the year of new beginnings, which means it's also the year of restoration. And so look for new beginnings in relationships. Look for new beginnings in work. Uh, look for new beginnings with uh, I, witty ideas and inventions, new beginnings, things that you've been contemplating and thinking about. It's time for them to be birthed and come forth. That may mean something to somebody. So these years have more meaning than the Gregorian calendar, which we normally follow. So here, here's how you would translate this from the Hebrew alphabet. To declare the weapon that you get from the secret place and to speak it out. That's what these letters mean. Awesome when you're able to go back into the Hebrew or use your Hebrew alphabet and do Bible study and bring forth that deeper meaning and understanding. And by reminding you about the word shalom. It's not on the board, but if you want to write it down, it's, um, you know, the S-H, shin, means fire that consumes. The L, lamed, means authority, and the M, mem, means chaos. Put those three letters together. Now, in English, we translate this piece, but, but it means more than the English meaning of peace. Fire that consumes but has authority over your chaos. And so when Christ sent out the disciples in Luke chapter 10, and he said, I want you to speak peace over all of these homes in every village. Before I come to those villages, you must do this. And when you do that, you speak shalom over them, then heal them. Eat with them, dine with them, but heal them. What's the connection? Does sickness cause chaos in a person's body? Speak forth my fire in my name. Over the, what is, has authority that's causing chaos in their life. And when you do that, because the thing causing the chaos is removed, the chaos itself is removed. Sickness, marital strife. Lack of finances, striving and uh, stress going on in, in family homes. When we release, see, God is an all-consuming fire. And when you release his shalom, you're releasing his fiery presence into those homes. My goodness, what would happen if we started praying for our neighbors? Five neighbors to the left, five neighbors to the right. Lord God, release shalom in that home and remove all of the chaos and anything causing that chaos. Remove it and let us see the demonstration of your peace in that home. What would happen? In fact, Christ Yeshua said this, I won't visit your village unless you do this. Does it still matter to him? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Does he still want us to pray for our neighbors? Yes, he does. And he's given us the strategy to do it. Unfortunately, in, trans in the translation, it got lost because we just went to English and forgot what he really meant. But when you go back into the original language and find out he was really speaking shalom, all of a sudden now you have a clue. Wait a minute, shalom is not a greeting. You know, we use it that way. 
Shalom, Dennis. Good to see you, man. Shalom to you. No, shalom is a weapon. It releases the fiery presence of God when you release it. So when I say to, to Dennis, shalom to you, brother, I'm releasing the fiery presence of God into his life and asking God to remove anything that's causing him from having peace. Isn't that awesome? So in our church, we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat, again, it's the S-H, fire that consumes, bet, house. Uh, the T means cross, covenant or cross. And so Shabbat means fire in the house of the cross. So when I say to you Shabbat Shalom, my goodness, I'm saying nothing's missing or broken, all chaos is removed from your life, and the on God's covenant day, and the fiery presence of his house where the cross is located. You see, this isn't these are not just nice greetings. They release something tangible in reality when you speak them. And so what I'm saying. To Dennis, Shabbat Shalom, my goodness. Dennis, nothing's missing, nothing's broken in your life, and the fiery presence of God in this house. I could preach on that. So we want to begin to learn how to use biblical expressions and biblical concepts that can impact people's lives. And when we go back into the original meaning of these words and the building blocks, in the Hebrew alphabet, suddenly, we're getting revelation so much more deeper than the English. And we tend to think that the rest of the world needs to learn English so they can understand things. Well, maybe we need to begin to go into God's Word and use His language and realize we can learn a whole lot more than what English brings to us from God's language. Let's ask God to bless us this week as we learn more. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us in this class today. We're learning about the word Zion and what it means. And there are weapons, spiritual weapons in your word that you want us to be able to pick up and use. Bless us as we're learning more, going deeper in you, deeper in your word. And bring us to that shalom, to that peace, Father God, where you remove all chaos from our lives and nothing will be missing or broken and we'll be restored in you. Thank you for blessing us today and throughout this week as we comp, uh, contemplate these concepts, these truths. And we thank you for blessing us in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.